To kick off National Poetry Month, I have a special read aloud just for you. Enjoy! The Best, <clears throat> Worst, Poet Ever by Lauren Stoller There once was a pug and a cat who engaged in a poetic spat. Cat and pug are each determined to become the world's best poet, no matter what it takes, whether they're writing sonnets or about Sundays or typing ballads with their butts. They will stop at nothing to outwit, outright, and outverse each other. But perhaps there is an even greater prize to be had. Can these two rivals discover the wonderful joy of writing together? Let's find out. From the mind of author and illustrator extraordinaire, Lauren Stoller. Hello, pug. Hello, cat. I hope it shan't disturb you that I plan to write some poems today. I hope it shan't disturb you, cat, that I intend to do the same. Well, look, I'll need quiet. No typing, no tapping, no crunching, no munching, no tail wag wapping. My tail doesn't wap, and I'll need things too, for my process, you know, as we poets do. No interrupting, no scritching, no scratching. No tooting, no scooting. No snorful catnapping. Fine. Fine. Now, if you'll excuse me. The poet is in. The poet is me. If you need a poem, I'll write one for thee. Maybe a ballad to sing in the shower? Or an ode to the odor of a sweet garden flower? An elegy for food that you dropped on the floor? Quatrains for monsters behind closet doors? A limerick involving a fly and a flea? A sonnet to Sundays with fudge and whipped cream? Whatever your style, you ask and I'll do. The special today is a fresh baked haiku. Don't poke the haiku. This fresh toasty haiku, plump with soft little words. Seriously? Don't be jealous. I'm not jealous. You're probably at least a little jealous. I could not possibly be less jealous. Fine, go ahead then. Your turn. Fine. Oh, can I write a poem with my butt? I don't know. Oh, can I write a poem with my butt? Here I go. You don't have to show me how. Look, I'm typing something now. Oh, I can write a poem with my butt. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I can write a poem with my toes? Probably. Oh, can I write a poem with my toes? Wait and see, they're just tapping up a storm, it's a poem being born. Oh, I can write a poem with my toes, dee dee dee. Oh, I can write a poem with my tongue. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, can I write a poem with my tongue? Eh, eh, eh. Hey, this poem's looking great, just forget that page I ate. Oh, I can write a poem with my tongue. Eh, eh, eh. I see London, I see France, I see Puggy's underpants. Someone put them up this tree. I'm pretty sure it wasn't me. Oh, look, they're loose. Oh, me, oh, my. They're sailing up into the sky. They're headed straight for outer space at quite an astronomic pace. They'll loop around the moon. They'll rocket back. Scientists will have to start to track a butt-shaped comet shining bright, a tidy whitey meteorite. By tomorrow, Pug's underoos will dominate the front page news. But who's to blame? Who could foresee this complete embarrassment? Not me. Something has happened much to my dismay. The cat packed a bag and went far away. Perhaps to a circus to fly the trapeze. Or maybe to France to eat fancy cheese. Maybe he got on a piratey ship. Or maybe he took an Antarctic trip. In any event, he's not coming back, so let's split his dinner. And don't open that. This, this is, is not, not working. working. You're awful. You're worse. I, I challenge, challenge you to, to a battle, battle verse. Here is a poem I wrote about pugs. Pugs are as lovely as slimy warm hugs. Pugs are like socks that are full of holes. Pugs are like oranges with too many seeds. Pugs are like old boots without any laces. 
Here's a poem I wrote about cats. Cats are as fun as a tent full of gnats. Cats are like soup, but without any bowls. Cats are like gardens that only grow weeds. Cats are a sentence without any spaces. If you were a pizza, you'd be old sardines with hairballs, anchovies, and cold lima beans. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? No, I shall not. There just isn't a way. You're like an old orchestra filled with kazoos, or a paper that prints only yesterday's news. Your autobiography's title would be Somebody Farted. No, wait. It was me. If you were a sandwich, you'd be piled high with licorice, frosting, and soggy french fries. Well, you'd be a... Wait. Rewind, if you please. Frosting, you say? And what else would I be? Limburger cheese, hot fudge that's gone cold, raisins so old they're all fuzzy with mold. Magnifique! Go on! Please tell me there's more. This is what you think of me? Mmm, déjà te dur. How about old bones left over from stew? Great greasy piles of mystery goo? Dirty gum peeled off the sole of a shoe. A big pile of something that smells just like... Woohoo! What delicious perfection! How tasty true! You're a friend and a poet and I never knew it! You've got me spot on, now let me do you! If you were a color, I think you'd be... Orange! Ugh. Wait, I can do better. Let's try one more time. If you were a... Uh, fruit! You'd be an apple pie. If you were a... Uh, flower! You'd be a bouquet. If you were a... Uh, painting? You'd be a Monet. Oh my! Oh yes. Cat, I'm quite impressed. Of all the poems ever, this might be the best. Stretch your fingers, your brain. We'll be at it all night. To the typewriter, pug, we've got poems to write. Now how shall we do this? You first, or me? I'll pick the title. I'll pick the theme. What if we throw all these words in the air? Put half over here and half over there? Look with me. Cat, do you see our poem? Shrub, fork, pickle, jumbo, ball. He's throwing. Let's try something different. Let's go line by line. I'll write the first, and the second is mine. If a line is too long, then we can enjam it. If a rhyme's almost rhyming, it's not wrong, it's just slanted. And if our line is a syllable over the limit, contract it. Just stick this thing in and we'll skip it. See, we poets change the rules however we like them. It says so right here on my poetic license. Now I'm inspired, I feel poems brewing. Cat, I think it's time that we did our debuting. I've got genius to foist on the poetry scene. Then anon and forthwith. Yeah, whatever that means. We're poets, we're here, we're ready to go. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the world's, world's greatest, greatest poetry, poetry show. show. <gasps> I'm exhausted. I'm pooped. I'm sapped. I'm all done. But I really liked this. Me too. I've had fun. So tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll write all the best poems ever. Good night, Pug. Good night. The end. Lauren Stoller lives and works with her the husband, Garth, in Connecticut, where they create art and pug poetry under their top secret internet pseudonym, at Ink Pug. When not writing stories or drawing pictures, they are probably on a walk to the ice cream shop. You can visit Lauren at inkpug.com. If you loved these books, check out How I Eat This and her sequel, Tasty, A Second Helping of Pug Poetry by Ink Pug. We are so very lucky, students. Miss Stoller has written you a special letter I have given your teacher to share with you. 
I hope this story inspires you to check out some new poetry books and do some writing of your own. I'm sure she wouldn't mind if you sent her a poem or a drawing or two. Happy National Poetry Month from us here in the library and have a great day.